Hello. Yeah. Now it's working. Technology. I'm a recruiter in a tech company, but there it goes. But thank you so much. I think I'm still learning uh, about the recruitment, especially in a very different market, a different country. I'm not a Finn. I'm not from Finland. I've moved here. I've moved here two years ago uh, from Denmark. So before Denmark, I'm from India. So, so I was in India, then my husband decided to, to move to Denmark, Copenhagen, and then he said, pack your bags. And I, I, did, I didn't have any idea how this country is, what or where is Denmark, to be very honest. That was my level of knowledge that time when I moved to Denmark. And I was all in that impression that it would be an easy market because I worked in India for 10 years, 10 years completely into recruitment. And just to give a background about myself, I'm a computer science engineer graduate, but I didn't take, I didn't follow that lead, but I realized my core competencies and I felt that I'm more good in the softer part of the competencies rather than the hard part of just sitting behind the computer and coding. Nothing wrong with the coder. I respect all of you who are there in this room. You're doing a great job. But then I realized that sooner than later and then pursued my master's in human resources. And now I'm working as a recruiter, as a tech recruiter in Relic Solutions in Finland. So today I'm going to share my journey uh, where I've learned, experienced, grown from a country which was my home country, then moved to Denmark, which was another land for me, and then to Finland. So I have uh, a perspective to share here through my presentation where I'll talk from a job seeker because I was a job seeker for two and a half years in Denmark. I didn't know the market at all. And then now since past one and a half years, I got a job in Finland, I'm working as a recruiter here. So I will share my perspective as a job seeker as well as a recruiter now in a, in a Finnish company. Outside work, I like meeting people with diverse cultural background because I've always been in India, but then when I moved to Denmark, I learned new culture, new personalities, and there's so much to learn from each other. And then now in Finland, I'm still learning in the process of learning and, and understanding how this country is, how the people are. So outside work, I like meeting people. I like volunteering with uh, different organizations. Uh, my topic of interest has always been around recruitments, around diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I am basically uh, volunteering with organizations here. Within Relics, I'm also working as part of the DI squad. So I uh, wear the hat as a recruiter, a job seeker, and then somebody who also then promotes diverse background in the organization. Yeah, so this is pretty much what I mentioned, that from not becoming a computer nerd to, to landing job into hiring tech professionals. This is how I look. It's, it's the, the beauty of a photographer. So, so that's how I look, and that's how I look here. But yeah, uh, I also mentor some international people who have moved here because I wanted to share my knowledge and experience from the markets, from the Nordic markets, and help people who are trying to find a job here. So outside work, I also try to then, then help the internationals and CVs, cover letter, with whatever experience I've got in this market. All righty. Yeah, so straight jumping to the topic. Uh, Saku, thank you so much for building a context for my topic because Saku has already covered about the CV and cover letter. I'm not going to go into detail of it, but some, some perspectives uh, while working with hiring managers when we recruit for different tech roles, so sharing some perspectives from, from hiring managers' point of view and then from a candidate's point of view as well. This all you have seen in Saku's presentation. He did mention about the CV, LinkedIn, I also talk about cover letter, but for the tech profiles, we don't expect uh, a cover letter. What we expect is a clear, simple CV, which is easy to understand. What I've noticed uh, in terms of the approaches or difference in approaches here in Finland is that uh, we look at the CV. That's the first document that will lead us decide if we want to go ahead with the profile or not. And if the CV is not at all structured, the layout is not clear, it's not simple to understand, relevant technologies where you've worked on is not mentioned, then it becomes difficult to decide that if you want to hire that candidate, especially if the candidate is not from Finland. That's the challenge. So when I first started working with my hiring manager last year, and I had my first recruitment sync with them, I had a very interesting uh, call, and, and then the hiring manager mentioned that, it's too overwhelming. I don't understand the CV. It's too long CV. 
It's too degeneric. What do I understand? What do I understand from the technical background that the tech stack the person has worked on? This requires relocation. Are we, are we prepared to relocate? Can we wait for that much time? So there were a lot of worries, anxieties, and questions which I just listened to the hiring manager, but then I didn't forget that I also handled or, or I also experienced that job market, and I, 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 I then put myself in, in that lens that, yeah, those questions are genuine. But now, since I worked in Denmark for a little stint, and then I have been working in India, so at least I had some perspectives to share with the hiring manager. And I felt that there is a lot of awareness which is lacking, they have worries because nobody, they would have not encountered such profiles or such applications. And then I started educating them, talking more about, mainly from the Indian perspective, because I worked in Asia Pacific and in India, so I knew that Indians have a tendency to have long CVs, which does not work here. And, and the CVs are pretty generic. They put everything, so it's too much of information. But since I worked in that market, I had that perspective to share. I didn't work in any other country outside Denmark and Finland, so I cannot share the perspectives from those reasons if, if the candidates are applying. So that's the worry the hiring managers usually have. The CV is not clear. Where is the, the projects, the GitHub repository or open source projects mentioned? How can I see the project? So how can I decide which project they've been working? What was their individual responsibility? So, so these were the few questions I, I got it, and then we realized that while, while getting those CVs, these were general worries. And in spite of me educating the hiring managers and, and giving some perspective that you cannot just assume and just reject the candidates because you have not seen different profile like this. So then, then I started telling them that India, this is the case. Nobody teaches us to how to make a CV and cover letter. So that's Maybe the candidate is good, so let's have a casual interview with the candidate. But then it was always the case that there was this worry, and, and I, I wanted to educate the hiring manager and also then to, to educate the candidate. So whenever I come across any candidate outside my work who's looking for a job, I give, give these kind of inputs to the candidate so that they could at least work on their CV. They can be educated. So, so yeah, I have, I have mentioned a few things, what we see in a CV. We definitely want to see uh, objective or, or the career objective or profile summary, which talks about your motivation and your interest, what Saku has already mentioned. It has to be very clearly defined the certifications, what you have done, GitHub repository or open source projects links needs to be there. If you have your LinkedIn profile updated, do put that, because in Finland, recruiters, as Saku mentioned, we always go on LinkedIn and check the profile. And for that matter, CV and cover letter is okay if you don't attach those documents. But if you have an updated LinkedIn profile, then, then that will do the, do the work. So, so in Relix, we don't require a CV and cover letter. But then if you don't get a LinkedIn, then we do ask for CV and cover letter. And it's always important to marry these documents. It should not be different documents. You have not updated your LinkedIn and you have just updated your CV. So it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. So, so that's another suggestion that while creating your CV, just uh, marry it and align it with what your CV is. Put your background and your projects, your technical stack, what you have worked on. Another observation while uh, coming along different CVs outside Finland, I've seen that even if people who have not worked on the project but they were part of it, they, they usually mention that technical stack. And when during the interview, if we shortlist them and they come for the interview and we ask them, they're not able to justify because they were just part of it. They're didn't. They they're not an expert out of it. So another thing, if you have really worked on that technical stack or, or that programming language, do mention that and then remove the other things. Yep. I've, I've mentioned something about cover letter, but again, I said that's, that's definitely not an important document for, from the de developer point of view. It's good to have, but it's not a must-have kind of document, so you can ignore that. This is what I learned when I was looking for a job. I never created a cover letter of my own in India. I, we don't require a cover letter to attach with any application because in India, the experience and background is more than sufficient. No companies look for motivation or passion. It's, it's okay to, if, you have, if you've worked in a very good company, if you've worked in the area of recruitment, for example, in my case, 
that does all the work. So I, I never had worked on my cover letter, and that's what I learned. That's, it, it is good to have, and if you attach this extra document, then it also gives a sense to the company that the candidate really has put some efforts and, and is really keen in, in finding a job or, or for this particular job. So that's always a good thing to do. Research about the company, that's another thing which uh, clearly is evident either in the cover letter, CV, or LinkedIn, or, or during the interview that the person has not researched about the company, and they don't know anything about uh, the products, what uh, people usually go on the GitHub project, product, projects, but none of the can, most of the candidates, they don't go and see what the projects this company is having. So I think that's a good idea to, to research about the company before applying. And I've mentioned that for technical role, just, just it's, it's very important to have this open source projects because then it's a best document to then validate what you've actually worked upon. Yeah, so now coming to the, to the second part. Now, what if your profile is shortlisted and if you have done all these things, which was missing, then, then the next question is interview. So, when I joined Relix last year, uh, relocation was not a norm. Uh, hiring managers of the business was started adapting to this fact that, okay, we need people, we need unique set of competencies, and that's how we are now open to relocate people or people from diverse backgrounds within Finland. Relix as a community definitely is a unique, uh, has unique personalities. It's, it's a very diverse, very international company, though it's a Finnish software company, but we have over 70 nationalities working with us, and I, I was of the impression that the hiring manager in Finland will be having that open mindset of hiring people with diverse background and with different unique set of traits, not somebody who's cloning them. And, and that's what I don't like, and I've been telling them that we are not looking for a clone, but we are looking for a diverse set of people. So what we do when we are evaluating candidates, so we have two, uh, two to three evaluation or assessment stages in our recruitment process. The first round usually focuses on the fitment kind of uh, attributes where we look at uh, values fitment and, and team fitment. Uh, we look at if the person is uh, keen to grow, learning new things, developing their skill sets. And the third important attribute or value we look for in a candidate is enthusiasm to, towards the company and position. And that's what I was referring when I mentioned that people don't research about the company. And this particular observation has been from people who are not from Finland. They just apply for a job, most of the cases, they apply for the job, they're not knowing anything about Finland. They don't have any knowledge. They feel that Finland is in Europe somewhere. We want to move to Europe. And that's the mindset I have, I have observed when we are interviewing the candidates in the first round of interview. And then they say, we want to relocate in Europe. And Finland seems to be a good country, but we don't know anything about the country. Relic seems to be a good company. You do something, but we don't know about the company. So that's what I, I usually tell the candidates that, or, or the people I know, that I cannot talk to every candidate who apply because of my bandwidth of my work. So it's not a possible thing, but I would love to share this knowledge that just please research about the company and the country you are relocating. Because if you do that research, then probably the companies will, will be open because that will show that you, have, you are sure you'll be moving to this country. It's not that you're just exploring opportunities. Other thing is people start comparing the countries within Europe because they don't know about Finland, they don't know the cost of living in Finland, and then they start talking during the salary expectation. They refer to, uh, to Germany, Netherlands, Denmark. And I always have to say, every country in Europe is different. There's no comparison. Some countries have some set of uh, salary ranges, some set of benefits which might not be there in the other country. And that's the mindset which I feel has been missing. Even if I educate the hiring manager and share my perspective that just be open to hire diverse uh, background people, just be open to hire candidates from anywhere, still when we go to that interview stage, I still find it missing. I feel that the candidate has not done the research. So yeah, during the, during the first round of interview, uh, we usually check upon, uh, we write it cultural fit, which I really personally don't like the word. It's like more of a cultural ad, because I feel that every culture is adding value to the team. So for me, it's more of a cultural ad and fitting to the team values. Somebody who wants to grow, who's, who's sure, who's, who's aware about the career path, who's, who's excited about expertise. 
and then somebody who, who's excited about the company and the position for which they are applying. These are the traits we usually appreciate well, when evaluating candidates or during the interview, in the casual as well as in technical interview. Somebody who has the ability to embrace change. And these four traits are usually linked, are, are actually linked with our values at Relix. And the ability to embrace change, what I wanted to say is, IT is an ever-changing uh, field. Every day, you, new technology is coming. And if you're not adapting yourself to learning new technologies and then upgrading your knowledge and skills, then you're just, your career just ends there. So somebody who, who is adaptable, flexible, feeling that we are, this is, the, the process is going to change. So ca coming with that flexibility uh, of mindset and adaptability is something we, we look, who is also liking the change and the change environment. Somebody who is an expert, uh, as I mentioned earlier, an expert, somebody who's not just journalist, that they know all the technologies and bit and pieces, but somebody who has actually worked on that tax tech, for example, on React, and then can say that I have worked. I, you ask me anything about this technology, and I'm, I'm, I can, uh, I can, I'm able to answer that. But not somebody who knows something about some technology, something about the other technology, and then just, it's, it's, you're not good in any one technology. So something who's an expert, because companies here, they, uh, they respect expertise. And I've, I've noticed one more thing, that Finns, for example, are pretty simple people. They are very straightforward. They like easy things. They like structure. And they, like some, they respect somebody who is an expert in their area, not somebody who's just journalist and doing everything and not good in any one thing. We also appreciate uh, somebody who is a good team worker because IT projects, you just alone cannot work. It's a team effort. So somebody who's, who's growing, helping, educating, sharing best practices within the team members is another quality or trait we appreciate when we are evaluating in our take-home test and in our uh, casual or uh, technical interview. And in all these things, we really don't want you to forget that you don't have to take yourself too seriously. Just, just be fun around. Just share and, and, have, and enjoy this piece of work, work, what you're doing. So basically, these are the four traits. And, and when we give a take-home test assignment to any candidate, we usually uh, do, does not look for a perfect solution or perfect code in terms of the technology, but we expect somebody who can then elaborate and explain the approach towards coming up with that solution. Somebody who's clearly explaining the approach, but not somebody who's perfectly doing the, doing the code. And I, I, one of the hiring manager, he said a very interesting thing uh, related to the team work, that we are not looking for rock stars who cannot work in team. And I always hear the word unicorns in IT. But I feel that teamwork is an important uh, aspect and a very important trait and attribute we look for when we are assessing the candidates in an interview. Uh, other observations uh, around the interview thing, uh, when I'm especially interviewing candidates from Asia Pacific, they have a lot of things to talk. They do long conversations. They uh, beat around the bush a lot many times. And again, my experience, just to make a note, my experience is from India, Denmark, and Finland. And my, most of the experience I'm sharing is from the Indian perspective that we like talking. We give long answers. We are not specific to the point. And, and that's another thing which turns off the uh, interviewer or the hiring manager when you are, you are in that interview, because they don't understand what actually are you trying to say. So effective communication skills is another attribute somebody should, should focus on and on looking for a job. Uh, this I felt is something good uh, to share perspective of my recruiters who are my colleagues who are working in US and Germany. And, and they did mention, just to tell you briefly what did they mention as a tip was, uh, share your success stories in the interview. And, and so that we could get an idea about how as a colleague, how as a teammate, and how as a leader you would be if you join the company. And the other perspective or the other tip is uh, in that, doing the preparation for the interview, don't forget to be yourself, be genuine, because we would like to see your own genuine self rather than uh, faking it in the interview. People say fake it till you make it, which I really don't like that statement because it, it is clearly evident in the interview when we interview the candidates, you can easily say that the person is just faking, but they don't know the actual stuff. There's no right and wrong answers. So, so the mantra is just, just be yourself, be your genuine true self, and then, then explain. But I'm done, I'm done. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah.